Devil Within 1 and 2, both verified on Steam Deck. I already tested the LCD, so I think in darker games the OLED is absolutely perfect. And we're on October, so perfect timing. Let's get into them right away. Alright, so for the Evil Within 1, there's an option to go to 800p. The thing is, the game still force 16 by 9 so you get a few extra frames actually going for 720 on this one. 30 or 60, you cannot go above it, you can use a mod for that, but personally I would just keep it at 60 to make it... I mean, it's not like the Steam Deck can get 90s on this game. And the other thing, you have multiple options, FXAA, no, uh, <laughs> no anti-aliasing, SMAA or MLAA. Choose between these two, in my opinion, see which one you like the most, but the game is super sharp, let's just say. It looks kinda pixelated, but that's just aliasing before TAA. So SSAO, yes, motion blur, no, reflections, yes. Going lower than this maybe give you, gives you two frames more at best and the game looks much worse. And there's a letterbox option, well, why is that, you might say? If you don't notice, the letterbox, the black bars, are hilariously huge, but this is, I guess, for the consoles to, when it came out, to get better performance. So we're getting 60s looking this way, but if I disable this <laughs> letterbox, again, we're still forced to 16 by 9 anyway, so it's not like it's going to make the entire screen use being used but as you can see there is a way way higher use of the screen but we lose performance we jump we lose 10 fps because we're rendering more pixels but i recommend keeping it like this and locking it to 50 fps or 45 so while this is not perfect i think it's good enough for the steam deck on the smaller screen that's okay I don't know why shadows are so grainy on the SSAO as well. But again, I'm using a very specific level that runs <laughs> worse than others on purpose. So as you can see, it can drop into the upper 40s, but personally I'll lock it to 50 while using the deck. If I run the LCD, maybe lock it to 40. I have a video showing you this on the LCD as well. But again, there's no way to use the entire screen on stock settings. But I recommend disabling the letterbox. It will be completely dark on the OLED deck, so it shouldn't be an issue. But if you're using the letterbox option, you're going to have a very little use of the screen. So, but you get better performance. So let me show you how it looks in handheld. Well, since this game is very, very dark, you're going to see my face reflected quite a bit. This is how it looks on the smaller screen. Again, considering this is the OLED, the dark colors really pop. Well, I don't know if that's the right word to use. But anyway, 50 or 45. Yeah, maybe 45 makes more sense to have some room to spare. But again, you can do 50s if you don't mind some drops in certain levels but this should give you two and a half hours of battery on a full charge and the game looks pretty good on the smaller screen it's way less noticeable when we talk about those edges because again we're not in TAA territory here actually you can see the actual edges and this game was on the engine on ITEC the engine from Rage that had those Mega texture technology, and it's not a good PC port. Let's be honest here. So, <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a good PC port. We can run it pretty well on Steam Deck. 50 or 45 on the OLED, maybe 40 is on the LCD. And again, I'm on a more taxing level on purpose. Oof. But this is a game I enjoyed quite a bit despite its flaws. It's fe it feels kind of like Resident Evil, <laughs> which makes sense. It's from 
the guy that invented Resident Evil in the first place, the director. But I'm starting to see that this is still an IP from Microsoft. So we're probably not going to see a, an Evil Within 3. But hey, at least we can in still enjoy these games now in a portable machine, <laughs> surprisingly enough. And if you want uh, 50 to 60, maybe consider enabling the letterbox. But with that, I think it takes way too much of the screen by enabling the letterbox. You get a massive performance boost, yeah, but I mean, look at the amount of screen we're using. It's freaking ridiculous. But if you don't mind, you'll get 60 FPS. Well, Devil Within 2, there is actual 16x10 support, which is awesome. That means the entire screen is being utilized. But we're doing 1152x720, still 16x10, very close resolution to the native one. And when it comes to the advanced settings, I disabled motion blur because in this game it has a huge performance impact. Same with depth of field. And basically medium settings with low volumetrics and TAA plus FXAA. And what's the benefit of doing a lower resolution than native in this case? Well, you actually have control over the sharpness. You can over sharpen the image if you want to. Personally, I like keeping it like this. Then when it comes to the scaling, we're using the FSR, the internal FSR from SteamOS. And well, as you can see now the game is at 30 FPS and you might be asking yourself why. So pretty odd behavior. There we go. And as you can see the frame times are super inconsistent. It fixed itself. So maybe it's an issue when you're in duct mode. Because now the frame times are completely fine. That's weird. So my advice here is to put it at 40, not 45. We're at 45 right now when it comes to the FPS cap. And where I drop performance the most is in very heavy, in this grass areas. When there's some grass, this game hates grass for some reason. This is a variant of it tech. So again, that engine that doesn't run particularly great, even on new hardware. Well, that's the one, it tech. But they changed it quite a bit. So here it's called the STEM engine. So there's a lot of proprietary technology over here. Let's lock it to 40. So open this menu. The usual. And go down to 40. You can do 45, but again, it's, it doesn't stay there for long. Alright, so 40 FPS lock, which means 80 Hertz on the OLED Steam Deck. And well, what to say? Not perfect frame times, but we're basically at the limit. The game doesn't fully utilize the GPU. I have a very beefy PC as well, and yeah, it's not. It does still doesn't use the entire GPU. I have a <laughs> an i9 and a 4090, and the game barely can barely hit 100 FPS, even at a much higher resolution. Even playing at 8K doesn't fully utilize the GPU. So this is definitely an issue with the game itself. Also, I already finished the game. That's why I can do intensive effects such as this one. I did it on purpose <laughs> to stress test what I'm doing here. But as you can probably notice, I think 40s is what works better. On the LCD, I'll lock it to 30 for consistency's sake. But the game itself is not a good PC port, like, at all. Just, I mean, the first one isn't a good port either. But at least this one, I don't know, I think it's a better game. It has less yank. It works a lot better in general. When it comes to stability. Of course, not a perfect game, obviously. But I think it's a great time. And usually it's very cheap on Steam sales. I think you can even get both of them together in a single package. So yeah. Let's do freeze bolt. 
of course this part has a lot of enemies and a lot of uh, grass which again is what makes this game drop frames the most there we go With these two atoms <laughs> So yeah, this one I highly recommend it. I think it's the one that I have the most hours in this franchise, which is not saying much because there's two games. But still, it's a great time. I think you should try it if you have the chance, especially if you like survival horror stuff. It's a great example. Very, very well done. I'm, I'm pretty sorry that this franchise is still from Microsoft and Tango Gameworks can no longer work on it. But who knows? We might be surprised. Hopefully that comment age as well. And again, I'm doing obviously this to drop as many frames as possible, but this is not the norm when it comes to performance. Where's the head? Oh. Never mind, it's dead. And you also have a lamp that casts shadows, which is on at the moment. And that's no coincidence. That makes the frames drop even further. But you'll need it. Again, grass locations, which places with lots of grass. That's when it likes to drop, but very good looking game, in my opinion. It's just not a good PC port, like the previous game. But you can do 40s on this one on the Steam Deck, on the OLED, if you're on the LCD, log it to 30. And then when it comes to the Evil Within 1, well, that one, log it to 45, but that one isn't perfect either, unfortunately. But I think on the OLED, it really fits very well with the dark atmosphere. I mean, the OLED with those inky blacks really makes a difference. Um, they are great games, especially the second one, at least in my opinion. And when it comes to battery life on the second one, we have three to three and a half hours. The first game is two and a half to three hours, give or take, on a full charge. So it's a good amount of runtime, I would say. And it's a, it's a great game, in my opinion, again. I miss games like this, actually. <laughs> so we can't have nice things. Funnily enough, the first game also came out on the PlayStation 3. It was a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One game. But it was also on 360 and PlayStation 3. This one was only on PS4 and Xbox One and the PC. But still. I thought that was interesting. All things considered. Anyway, that's it for The Evil Within. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did revisiting them on the Steam Deck OLED. Again, there's a video on the LCD Steam Deck for this one. Great games for Halloween, at least in my opinion. So give them a shot. Give them a chance, better said. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.